Hey guys, Sanjog here. Let's talk about the the hexagon. So, what's the hexagon? The hexagon is a concept made by John Harrison, a an American who he he overcame his stutter, but he says he dissolved his stutter rather than like coming up with ways to manage it. So hexagon, as you can imagine, has six points or sides or aspects. So they include physical behaviors physiological responses, intentions, perceptions, beliefs, and the most important one, I think, emotions. Basically, idea is every time you speak, every situation you're in, you have a hexagon. And for example, in a an interview, let's say you're very nervous, your belief would be, I can't speak well under pressure, I I am not worthy of, of being in this interview, the, the interviewers are going to ju- judge me for stuttering, all that kind of crap that's probably taking place on a subconscious level rather than a conscious level, but it could be conscious as well. Your your perceptions, so the, so the, the judgment example before probably is, is best placed under perceptions, but uh, another per, perception could be one of the interviewers looks angry today. He probably hasn't got time for me to stutter. And that places more pressure on you. Intentions. So almost always, if you block, you have a conscious intention to speak, to express yourself. Almost always, if you block, yeah, you will have had a subconscious intention to hold back and not speak. Now, the reason for this is because you want to hold back. You want to subconsciously protect yourself from experiencing whatever negative emotion that, that will result from you having spoken. And, it, and yeah, if you'd spoken and you hadn't blocked, then you probably, you could have got a negative emotion. So the block's purpose is to protect you from that emotion. So a a good way of dealing with intentions is to be assertive, to to increase the volume of your voice, because this this almost forces the conscious intention to speak to be much stronger than the unconscious one. Well, so physical behaviors, this is the kind of, this is the kind of shit you do automatically before you block and you probably don't even realize. So I've been observing myself and before I block, my stomach tenses up, my, my air, my, my breathing, sorry, becomes shallow. The, the vocal cords actually begin to lock up before the, the feared word is said. And just, just lost my train of thought here because I'm, I'm trying to block the sun from the video. Anyway, so I just had a complete mind blank.
Oh yeah, <laughs> physical behaviors. So, stomach goes tense, breathing becomes shallow, vocal cords get ready to lock up. Yeah, so, so these things can be improved by perhaps taking a deep breath, getting a regular breathing cycle when you speak, ensuring you're as relaxed as possible, and physiological responses, there's nothing you can do about this. This is like genetic, genetic influences or factors that you might have. So how prone you are to anxiety, how your body reacts to anxiety. So if you're like a lot of stutterers, yeah, you're probably highly sensitive and you probably, your body triggers a fight or flight response pretty quick when it's placed under uh, any kind of stress. There's not much you can do about this, so just ignore it. <laughs> and emotions. I think this is the most important one. I personally believe that the majority of stuttering is caused by repressed emotions or not allowing yourself to feel the emotions real time. Real time, real time. So what just happened then, I had an intention to hold back on the R sound because I know R sounds are tricky for me. And to counteract that, I just doubled my volume. Now, that probably wouldn't have worked in a, in a situation where I was actually under pressure. But that was an example of it, it working and me having clear intentions. Okay, so they're the points of the hexagon. And anytime you block, the severity of the blocking episode or the, or the frequency of your blocks is entirely determined, determined upon by how negatively biased those points on the hexagon are. Now, let's take an example of a positive hexagon that almost everyone can re relate to. Relate to. So, speaking by yourself. So, why is it that we're almost fluent when we're by ourselves? Now, the vast majority of stutterers are either completely fluent or much more fluent when they're by themselves than when they're in the presence of another human being. It's just because all those points on the he hexagon are completely positive. Are completely positive. You, you're not gonna judge yourself because why would you judge yourself for blocking, for stuttering? You, you, you have the belief that you can speak well by yourself because you always have. You don't, have any, you don't have any negative perceptions. Your emotions are perfectly balanced. You're happy probably. And most importantly, you're not holding any emotions back. You're not hiding anything from yourself. You're just being yourself. You're letting yourself talk. That's why we're fluent by ourselves. So what can you do to improve the hexagon? That's the million dollar question. For emotions, you can start observing yourself, see what you're holding back, journal and write down everything that happens during a speaking situation in which you block in. Literally analyze every block. And then eventually you'll, you'll start becoming more and more aware of what you're holding back. Another couple of things you can try is EFT tapping. It's supposed to help. You can, you can try a couple of things. Just, 
Just YouTube repressed emotions release. For intentions, try, just tripped over. Try being 100% clear on why you're speaking, what you're saying, and try as best you can to have the conscious intention to make yourself heard because your, your point is valid. And the clearer your intention is, the less likely you will be to hold yourself back. Physical, I already talked about, do some breathing. Physiological, can't do anything really. I mean, you could try and work on your fight or flight response. Meditation will probably help with that actually, now that I think about it. Perceptions and beliefs. So you can ch challenge your perceptions and your beliefs by analyzing them and questioning them. NLP is supposed to be good for this. Apparently people have managed to ch change their perceptions and beliefs through NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. I feel like I'm forgetting one. Motion physical. No, I think that's all the points. So, that's it. Hope you enjoy the quick, quick course on the hexagon. How it relates to stuttering. I believe the hexagon is the answer to blocking. A lot of speech therapy courses try and manage the symptoms of your holding back issue, aka, aka your stuttering issue. But if you want to tackle the root cause, look at the hexagon and specifically look at your emotions and see what you're holding back or see what you're holding back see what you're holding yourself back from experiencing